Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve Lund, and in this video, we're going to talk about sunlight and balls. <laughs> Does sunlight have a positive effect on your testosterone levels? And is like shining sunlight on your balls actually a good way to raise your testosterone levels? And how does it affect your health, sperm quality, and uh, those sort of things? Balls, man! So make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about optimizing your health and performance. Do it! So the idea behind this video is that there's uh, actually like this, uh, a few years ago even, there was this uh, trend called perennial sunning or uh, similar where you basically expose your butthole and your testicular, testicular region to the sunlight and this is quote unquote essentially going to help you to absorb the sunlight much faster, <laughs> increase your vitamin D levels much faster and also has like some other health benefits because you're directly shooting the sunlight into your balls and your nutsack and so that essentially is gonna maybe bypass some of the time needed to see those effects and it's quote unquote like a you know faster way of having those benefits and this is actually one of the most original videos as well that you know illustrates this uh, idea so uh, I'm just going to play a little bit and we'll talk about the science behind it uh, afterwards in a mere 30 seconds of sunlight on your butthole you will receive more energy from this electric node than you would in an entire day being outside with your clothes on. I was tripping balls. So yeah, you get the point. I'm not pretty sure that it's not true that you need to only spend 30 seconds shooting sunlight into your nutsack and your butthole and you're gonna basically get the same response as you would if you were to be naturally uh, outside with your clothes on. So yeah, like the more skin you do get exposed to uh, to the sunlight, the more vitamin D you're going to synthesize and, you know, the, this time you also need to spend outside. But yeah, I'm not sure, like, the 30 second rule <laughs> is accurate. But regardless, you know, we'll leave it at that. What about the testosterone levels? So, uh, the first kind of study that actually looked into whether or not this, uh, let's say, light exposure has a benefit on your testosterone and uh, sex hormones, if you shoot it on the testicles, comes from like 1939. So this very old study, and uh, yeah, it's, it was called Influence of Ultraviolet Irradiation Upon Excretion of Sex Hormones in the Male. So basically, I'm going to summarize the study that uh, they took these small quartz mercury lamps, now on the market, and uh, the lamp consisted of 52% infrared, 20% luminous, and 28% ultraviolet rays. The duration of exposure to the light was 8, 10, 12, 15, 18, and 20 minutes, each succeeding uh, exposure being increased over the preceding one. And they did it over the course of uh, like a week or so, if I'm not mistaken. And all the patients, they suffered from depressive states. <laughs> Three patients were 50, 54 years of age, manic depressive psychosis <laughs> and uh, depressive features. So these people weren't like, you know, particularly healthy p people and uh, they, uh, yeah, like what they saw that after five irradiations of the chest, the hormone output was raised to uh, 150 IUs per liter, which was an increase of 120%. The next series of irradiation was applied solely to the genital region and its immediate vicinity, the remainder of the body being carefully protected from all rays. After five ir irradiations during six days, the androsterone excretion was raised from 70 to 205 IUs, nearly 200%. So we see this graph as well. Uh, five irradiations of chest up to like 150 IUs, three irradiations of chest was 120, and five irradiations on the uh, genital region was 200. So it's like a significant, uh, you know, increase higher level, uh, much higher than that, etc. And uh, so, yeah, there is, you know, some, uh, let's say, but it's uh, like a very old study. <laughs> it, it hasn't been replicated like this way uh, as well. And, uh, you know, it's definitely tells you that, uh, you know, maybe there is something to it that you expose your, uh, let's say, testicles to sunlight or any kind of uh, this kind of uh, ultraviolet uh, UV radiation, uh, at least like in a hormetic dose in the right amount, because like excess, excess da damage, excess UV radiation is definitely, you know, something that is harmful to your health and causes, you know, DNA damage, skin damage. And that sort of thing, if you get it like from our artificial source, especially. And, uh, you know, it also makes sense that it may have like a testosterone boosting effect because, you know, up to 95% of your testosterone is produced in the testes, at least for men. There are like some other studies that also find that uh, continuous light, uh, like not from a, like an artificial source, but like a continuous light exposure in, t in general has a positive effect on spermatogenesis on, and testicular sp steroid genesis in rats. 
So uh, male rats exposed to continuous light for 70 days showed an increased weights of testes, accessory sex, sex organs, uh, serum levels of FSH, LH, testosterone, etc., etc. You know, there's been people like uh, Ben Greenfield who has also uh, talked about this, but he uh, has um, done it with more like red light therapy. So why could that be? Why would, uh, let's say, red light and UV radiation have a positive effect on the testes and testosterone production? So I'm going to read like an article actually by Red Light Man. The testes produce testosterone, they produce sperm, and they also require a lot of ATP because of that. Like it's said in the article, sperm production is highly dependent on ATP production. So you need ATP energy for uh, producing essentially uh, t sperm and also just being healthy in general. So uh, red light therapy has a positive effect on the mitochondria by boosting mitochondrial function and into doing also increasing ATP production. So uh, with the red light, the red light wavelengths especially, they uh, have been, yeah, in a lot of studies actually have been shown to have a positive effect on uh, testicular function as well as sperm motility, so the effect of 655 nanometer diode laser on dog sperm motility. <laughs> so uh, if you shoot red light on the on the balls of uh, dogs, <laughs> they're gonna have basically better sperm quality and the sperm motility. In uh, quails, in Japanese quails, there's also uh, seeing that red light on the testicular region has you know, better effects. So greater testes weights were found in birds under higher light intensities. So uh, yeah, red light, I think it's more like the red light especially that is uh, responsible for this increase in testosterone and uh, and the sperm uh, quality exposed to the testes because like sunlight is composed of uh, many things. So sunlight is composed of many different wavelengths. The vi visible uh, light is, you know, the rainbow, the rainbow color and um, Usually, you know, during daytime, you have a lot of uh, blue light. You get everything during the sunlight. But uh, in the morning parts, earlier parts, you get more blue light, more green light. And in the as the day goes uh, on, in the later part of the day, it's going to be more orange, yellow, and red. So red is going to be primarily during the sunset, etc. So uh, during the daytime, you get more this uh, blue light. And blue light, you know, it's not bad. It's not harmful to your health. You need blue light to basically produce cortisol, to wake yourself up in the morning, to, you know, help with things like autophagy actually. So uh, yeah, you need blue light and you need it more, more so in the, in the morning. Like blue light at the night time is uh, harmful to your sleep and it's gonna be bad for just, you know, overall recovery. And blue light are from artificial sources. Blue light from the, uh, let's say, screens. Blue light, isolated blue light. Isolated blue light, only blue light that you get from a smartphone. Or let's say the, the blue light that you get from uh, the, uh, the glass, the window that is actually harmful to your skin and just overall health because you're getting this isolated blue light only and uh, that is, you know, causes DNA damage and uh, it's harmful to your, let's say, overall health. So you don't want to actually get the blue light in isolated forms. You want the blue light with together the red light and the other wavelengths because they're going to basically have like an anti-inflammatory effect that counteracts the blue light. So uh, getting it from the sunlight is, you know, the healthiest way of getting the blue light. Uh, compared to using these, uh, you know, uh, screens. When you're using the screens and you want to use like some filters or where well, these uh, see-through uh, blue blocking glasses to protect your eyes, to protect your skin and uh, to protect yourself from DNA damage. Uh, but regardless, I think that the most of the uh, spermatogenesis effects, the testosterone boosting effects of sunlight on the testes come from the red light. And yeah, if you shine red light on the testes, as is seen on these uh, studies and animal studies, <laughs> and as, as shown by Ben Greenfield, is that uh, it does uh, raise your, at least like a positive effect on the testosterone levels as well, whereas the blue light is not so. So, uh, you know, arguably, if you were to say like, okay, which one is better, like you wouldn't need to be uh, necessarily shining your balls on the sunlight uh, to get these benefits. You could also do it only with the red light, you know, that's because the red, I think the red light yeah, is, is probably the biggest reason why this uh, testosterone boost happens. All right, everyone, chill. You don't want to be overheating your balls. So that is definitely a harmful thing uh, for sperm quality, especially because in one of my previous podcasts as well, uh, we talked about how excess heat in the testicular region is going to lower sperm quality, whereas cooling it off with like ice packs and uh, cold baths or cold water is going to actually help with testosterone production, improves blood flow, can help with like uh, erectile dysfunction or something uh, by doing that and uh, that sort of things. So, um, you know, whenever you are doing, you know, sunlight in your balls or something, then uh, make sure you're not overheating them either. And yeah, I would say that any more than like 10 or 10 minutes or something is probably too much 
uh, because of you know the same reasons like you don't want to be basically frying those balls <laughs> you want to get the therapeutic dose and uh, after that help with actually the recovery by having some cold there maybe or something like that and the same applies to the red light uh, with the red light you get only the red light which is uh, the therapeutic uh, wavelengths and you avoid the blue light so you don't want to get in the blue light uh, from from there and you know if there were to be like some ideal time of the day to do it then yeah maybe like in the afternoon is probably better because then there's less of this blue light and uh, only primarily this uh, red orange uh, light that you get so yeah you know if you have like the red light therapy device then you're gonna biohack it anyway so <laughs> you're actually doing the red light into the right region where it, where it matters and you're only getting the beneficial wavelengths that uh, actually have these uh, effects that you're looking for my balls on my balls all right that's it for this video let me know in the comments have you done this are you doing this are you doing the red light or are you doing the uh, sunlight click the like subscribe notification bell as well for future videos thanks for watching my name is seem stay optimized stay empowered